comer. So, hello everybody. Hi, it's Kumiko Kanayama. I'm a founder of Five Rights Center. I've been doing this global shiatsu virtual gathering since April 11th, 2020. Today is day of 11, December 11th. We are so happy to have uh, all the guidance from all the teachers from the past, current, and uh, present. Zara, she's our great presenter of the day. Mm. So I'm gonna start to share my screen and here. There. So today's presentation is winter water element self-care. Now we are in a season of winter. Winter indicates water element. We're gonna go inside of ourselves. We're gonna be our philosophers in this life. And we wait for the spring energy to come up. It's a, such a wonderful time to go really inside yourself and reflect yourself. Let's learn from Lizara. She's been teaching Shiatsu Chinese medicine for so many years. She was a massage therapist and she was fucked with the Chinese medicine. Now she teaches Chinese medicine to the, all the massage therapists they are so inspired by Razara to combine East and West. We are so grateful to have Razara. Thank you. And let's put our hands, both hands together, and Gasho meditate our heart and mind together. And think for others who need healing energy, healing hands. Let's send good vibration to everybody. Before we start, may I, may I say something? Yes. So I'm very happy. My name is Eva, Eva Salonia. I'm Kumika's assistant. And I'm very happy we have uh, Rizella today. And uh, Rizella has this angelic energy and uh, she said that everyone can tap into angelic energy. So, and Rizella is um, surrounded by purple color, which is uh, special. And uh, today to honor Rizella and uh, angel energy, I put on myself everything that I, purple that I have at home. And it also turned out that my vacuum cleaner is for purple and <laughs> to sweep the floor um, is also purple. So intention for today is to clean this world from bad energy and invite good energy and invite angels into our lives and into future for good future. So thank you. Thank you. Namu shinyo ichi nyo to 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 ki mi ho to ke o nenji tate matsuru zangi zange rokkon zai sho metsu jo bon no metsu jo gon sho om saraba tata gata anamana no garo mi. And let's reflect ourselves. Think about in yang energy. Are we balanced? Are we centered? Our mind is together. And let's learn from Lizara to balance our energy. Thank you, Lizara.
Thank you so much, Kumiko and Iwa. Did I say your name correctly? I so appreciate your warm welcome, and I am honored to be with you again. I just feel so much um, admiration for the work that you do in bringing people together and um, and really like lifting people's energy by sharing and promoting shiatsu and the Eastern approach to healing. It's really beautiful. So um, yeah, I appreciate your introduction. As Kumiko said, I've been studying and teaching Chinese medicine um, within the context of massage therapy for many years. I taught at a massage school and now I have my own massage CEU school. Maybe you've heard of it, Open Pathways Institute for Integrative Massage. And um, I recently posted a self-paced class on Kumiko's website on the Five Lights Center website. You might check it out. It's called Acupressure's Potent Points for Calming Complaints. And it, and it brings together sequences of points for really common client complaints like low back ache or insomnia, shoulder neck tension, headaches. Anyway, that's a little aside. Um, also, like Zara, you became our, one of our elective teacher. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. I'm Thank so you. happy to have your information content. Ah, it's such really... a great. It's so useful. Mm -hmm. mm, thank you and so compliments what you're doing the good work that you're doing with people so thank you for including me um so without further ado we have an hour i have a slideshow with just a little information that i want to share with you about water element and the meridians of water element which are of course the bladder and the kidney meridians but mostly i really want us to do to do things together, to do some self-care practices, to find these points on ourselves. I'll be talking about essential oils and how to use oils on the points. Unfortunately, if some of you are here at the beginning. I was telling Kumiko I got snowed in at my sister-in-law's house, and so I wasn't able to get home. So I don't have my oils with me, but I can still talk about them. And uh, we'll uh, maybe you'll have the oils. We'll see. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and get my PowerPoint up for you guys. Hold on one minute. Let me make this a little bigger. Okay. Let's see. There we go. It's loading. Winter's water element. So where I am right now, it's very, very winter. It's We just got over a foot of snow and it's zero degrees outside. And I feel my energy, just as Kumiko was saying, just kind of turning inward, right? This is, this is part of water element. It, um, it draws the energy down and in. It's a very self-reflective time. It's the most yin time of year when the days are shortest, darkest, coldest. And if we look to nature and see what's happening in nature, that gives us clues about what's happening within us, water element within us. So we see in nature that animals are going into hibernation. They're going to sleep. They're going into their deep unconscious. So as, as Kumiko mentioned, this is our time of inner reflection. And all the seeds are dormant under the earth, awaiting the springtime birth. So this is the time as we turn inward and self-reflect to find what seeds are germinating or are dar dormant within us, waiting to be born. What's, what's what are the seeds of your womb space? And everybody has a womb space, whether you're a woman or a man, and everybody has that creative energy. It's not just about making babies. What's waiting to be born through you in your life? What are you being called to share with the world? 
where are you being called on your path? Maybe to write a book, maybe to open a massage school. <laughs> Who knows? There are, many, there are many ways to give birth in your life. And this is the time when we go within and connect with that womb space, with the seeds that are dormant under the earth. So I want to start with a very simple, very simple meditation to connect with that space. And we'll be connecting with an acupressure point that's just below the navel. So here's my navel. If you count one, two, three fingers widths below the navel is CV6. And if you have some vetiver essential oil, you can put one drop of vetiver essential oil on your finger and hold the point. And then just place your other hand on top of the finger that's holding the oil. If you don't have vetiver essential oil, just put your two palms, one over the other, over that point and close your eyes and draw your attention inward. And start by connecting with your breath and follow the stream of breath all the way down from the nostrils down into this point in your lower belly called Sea of Energy. And then on the exhales, stay with that area, feeling it empty. And then on the inhale, feeling it full, filled with your breath the breath of life and the chi of life. And then on the exhale, feeling it empty. And stay with that. I'll talk just a minute longer and then we'll sit for a few minutes in silence. Vetiver essential oil is a woody oil. Excuse me, it's a rooty oil. So it draws the energy down right? Like the roots that sink into the earth. The rooty oils and vetiver ground us. They center us. And using it on this point, on the sea of energy, in the center of our hara or our dantian, draws our energy down to, into our center and grounds us, connecting us with the earth. And settling us in our womb space. So let's just take a few minutes here in silence. Continuing to connect with the breath filling and then emptying our womb space.
slowly start to open your eyes. Just gradually letting in the light in the room. And stay with that settled energy right there in your center as we move on to the next slide. I think my uh, slideshow went out of order. Hold on a minute. Here we go. So as I mentioned, the meridians of water element are the bladder and the kidney. And among the many functions of the kidney, it's the storehouse of both our prenatal and our postnatal chi. It's also the storehouse of our jing, which is translated as essence. So let me just talk a little bit about that, and then we'll again come back into our bodies to help replenish our energy reserves and to nurture the jing, the essence. So what I mean by it being the storehouse of our prenatal and our postnatal chi, the prenatal chi is the chi that we're born with. It's our constitutional chi. We come into the world with this. And then the postnatal chi, also called the acquired chi, comes from the food that we eat and the air that we breathe. The spleen transforms the essence of food into chi as the lungs transform the, es transform the essence of air into chi. And then this gets mixed and circulated through the body. The jing, this is sometimes a difficult concept for Westerners to grasp and Kumiko, feel free to add anything. It's translated as essence, and one of the things that I think about is the template of the DNA in our physical bodies, in our genes that encode who we become physically as we grow, as we become ourselves, as we grow into ourselves. So. Um, like the DNA, I think of the Jing or the essence as this template for who we are to become, but not just physically, but who we are to become as a whole person, as a being. Um, what is our destiny, so to speak, in this world? What are we meant to be doing? What are the gifts that we're meant to be sharing? And I think, I imagine through your training in shiatsu, you've already tapped into some of that, but um, it's something we're discovering all the time as we move through our lives. And it's very closely related to the Ming men, which I will talk about in just a minute. But I wanna start with a very simple exercise. I'm going to go ahead and stand up, and I invite all of you to stand up. And to build our energy in a very general way, I'm going to start by doing some Tao In, which is Chinese self-massage. It's a branch of Qigong to get the energy circulating more strongly through our body, and we'll spend a little extra time nurturing the kidney chi as we do that by putting some Hi, Zara, can you uh, stop your slide so we can see you sure thank you there yes we go. yes great so we're gonna do some self-massage encouraging the circulation through all the meridians but as i said with a little extra emphasis on nurturing the kidneys so I want to show you two points right here in the back, level with the waist. So my hands are, are on my waist. Can you see my back okay? Yeah. My thumbs go to the medial erector. That's bladder 23. And then here on the lateral erector, bladder 47 in the Worsley numbering system. Those are very nurturing points for your bladder chi. Let's just start by using our knuckles, making a loose fist, and doing some brisk rubbing there, warming the kidneys. Mm -hmm. Nice. Ah, and then 
let's get the energy circulating through the whole body. So start with your palm up and do quick, brisk brushing motions. We're starting at lung one and we're working on the yin or the inner arm coming from the chest to the upper arm and then from the elbow to the wrist. Your hand is soft and your wrist is soft and you're doing quick, brisk brushing motions. Then all the way out the hand on the inside, the inner hand. Then turn over, you're on the yang aspect and change direction. Now go from the wrist to the elbow and then the elbow up to the shoulder and then the shoulder up to the neck. And then down the outside of the body. So we're covering all the meridians to encourage and build our chi. All the way down, let me shift my camera, the outside of the leg. <laughs> and then outside of the calf and the outer foot from the outer ankle bone to the pinky toe and then switch directions and go from the big toe to the inner ankle bone and then up and the inner thigh and the groin and then come up Follow the kidney line up from the pubic bone to the collarbone and then start on the other side at lung one coming from the chest to the upper inner arm and then the inner forearm and then the palm side of the hand and the back side of the hand. You'll switch directions coming up from the wrist to the elbow. And then elbow to shoulder, all the way up on top of the shoulder to the neck and you can support your working arm at the elbow. And then come down the outside of the body. Leg. And the outer calf. And the outside of the foot towards the pinky toe. Then the inner foot from the big toe to the inner ankle. And then you're coming up the inner calf to the inner thigh. And we've already done the front body here, but let's add the face. And then over the top of the head. So now we're coming down bladder meridian, down the back of the skull and the neck, as much as you can reach onto your upper back. And then coming down, you can use the back of your hand on each side of the spine and coming back to those kidney points I showed you, bladder 23 and 47, briskly rubbing and warming the kidneys. And then continuing down behind the glutes, the back of the thighs, the backs of the calves, and all the way out to the pinky toe. And then bend your knees and tuck your tailbone and stack up and just take a moment to stand and notice the difference in your energy by doing this very simple self massage technique just brushing along in the direction of the meridians and warming the kidneys let's do just a little bit more let's do a duh which is a loose fist so loose you can look through with binoculars <laughs> I'm just going to take a moment, hold on a minute, to mute everybody because there's a little bit of noise. Mute all in current position. Okay. And from Lung One, again on the yin arm. So now we're working on the yin meridians the lung, the heart pericardium coming all the way out the palm 
And then when you're on the back side of the hand, use your palm because knuckle on bone doesn't feel very good. And coming up the back side of the arm, now we're on the young meridians, the small and the large intestine and the triple warmer. And when you come up onto the shoulder and the neck, you can support your elbow. And when you come down the outside of the body, you're on the gallbladder meridian. And again, you can use your palm on your hand, first going from the outer ankle bone to the pinky toe, and then from the big toe to the inner ankle bone. And when you're coming up the inner leg, because we're emphasizing the water element, the kidney meridian is the most posterior of the meridians on the inner leg. Coming up to the groin. And then on the abdomen, I use my finger pads. And you can come continue up the kidney meridian just outside the midline, coming all the way up to the head of the collarbone. And then with a loose fist, we'll continue on the second side. So we're coming down the yin arm all the way to the palm and then on the yang side of the arm using the flat hand and then a loose fist coming up the yang arm all the way to the shoulder and the neck and then coming down the outer body the gallbladder All the way down using the flat surface of your hand on your foot and when you use your loose fist coming up the inner leg emphasize the kidney meridian most posterior aspect of the inner leg and then we already did the front body here just let your fingers do your walk the walking on your face Right, we're not going to use our fists on our face, but we'll use our finger pads. Same thing up on the scalp. So let's emphasize the bladder meridian, which starts right at the upper inner corner of the eye, comes over the top of the head just outside the midline, and then continues just outside the midline, the back of the skull, continues down just outside the cervical spine, and comes on to the back, forming two rivers of energy on the inner and outer erector. So using a loose fist again, just behind the kidneys, but very gentle behind the kidneys. Very gentle behind the kidneys. Just warming, stimulating. And then continue down the bladder meridian over the sacrum over the glutes, coming down the back of the leg, the back of the calf, and you can use the flat side of your hand on your outer foot, the bladder meridian ends in the pinky toe, and then bend your knees, and tuck your tailbone and come up, and take a moment again to just stand and feel how does that very simple self-massage technique affect your energy? Really lifted my energy. So these are simple tools we can do at home to stimulate and build, to nurture our chi. And rubbing briskly behind the kidneys really helps to nurture the kidney chi. So I'm going to continue my screen share. Let's see. Here we go. So I still feel like <laughs> my slides are a little out of order, but that's okay because it's all good no matter what order we do it in. So I want to talk a little bit about the source points for the kidney and bladder meridians because those are very potent points for balancing 
the meridian in general. They're like your powerhouse points. So if you don't have time to work the whole line, the bladder or the kidney line, you can go directly to the points, the source points, and nurture the whole meridian. So I want to show you how to find the source points if you don't already know for the kidney and bladder. And then we'll talk about what essential oils will be helpful for those source points. So the source points are on the feet. And I'm going to, I'll stop my share for a minute so you can see my foot. <laughs> I'll just hold my foot up for you because the kidney source point, let me turn sideways. The kidney source point is halfway between the inner ankle bone and the Achilles tendon. That is kidney three. So I encourage you to find it on yourself as I'm showing it. And so you can connect with the point on yourself. If you're not sure where the point is, hold your foot up so I can see. And I'll take a look. I'll put it on gallery view for a minute so I can see uh, if you want me to check your point. Do you guys all feel pretty confident about where your kidney three is? Yes, thank you, Eva. Good, good. Okay. And then the bladder source point <clears throat> is on the other side of the foot, bladder 64. So if you go here to the outer foot, right where the plantar and dorsal skins meet, there's a bump, the tuberosity of the fifth metatarsal, and you go just behind that bump, so you're just uh, proximal to the bump, right where the plantar and the dorsal skins meet. So you're not on the upper foot and you're not on the lower foot, you're just outside. Okay. Yeah, nice. Good. All right. Do you want me to put, do you want to put me back in the spotlight? Let me see. There we go. I know figured out how to do it. And I'm going to go back to my screen share and talk a little bit about ways that you can stimulate those points. I mean, I think almost everybody here is a shiatsu practitioner, so you probably know very well how to hold points, press points, stimulate points. Um, we can do it with our hands. We can do it also with essential oils. And the essential oils that I recommend, whoops, are primarily the woody oils. So the uh, energetics of the woody oils, each of the fragrance categories, affects the chi or the energy of the body differently. So the woody oils draw the energy down and in, right, down and in. And that's exactly, excuse me, I have to put my sock back on so my foot doesn't get cold. That's exactly what's happening with our energy in the wintertime. The energy of water element is drawing down and in. We're going very internal to our core, to our center, searching inside ourselves. So the woody oils really encourage that movement of chi. One of the woody oils that I um, love to use is Atlas Cedarwood. Works very well on kidney three. So if you have, I'll just name the oils I'm going to go through so that if you have them, you can get them. Atlas Cedarwood, Black Spruce, Vetiver, and Nutmeg. Um, the way that you use oils on points, it's the oil that's stimulating the point rather than your finger. So your finger, its only job actually is to hold the drop of oil on the point and then the oil stimulates the point. So all of your shiatsu techniques, all of your massage techniques that you've learned for stimulating points, you can let rest and let the oil do the work. And generally, we just gently, so if we're on kidney three, for example, we'll put one drop of Atlas Cedarwood on our finger. If we're only using one drop, it's safe, undiluted. And we hold the point for one to three minutes or until you feel the energy shift, whichever comes first. So again, because most of you are shiatsu practitioners, you know what I'm talking about. When you feel the energy shift in the body, you'll feel pulsing under your finger, 
sometimes I actually feel the energy come up under my finger and push my finger out of the point. Sometimes I, I feel warmth. If my client is face up, I can see a change in their expression or a change in their complexion. 